Hey, welcome back to the channel. This video, I'm gonna show you how to put wood on the wall. We'll build this rack. So we're gonna build this wood rack. I wanna walk you through that in this video. But hey, first, this is Maker at Play and I'm Michael. And I appreciate you here watching my videos. I hope you learn something from them. Maybe get a little entertainment out of it. If not, eh, sorry. Doing the best I can here. So let's talk about this rack. It's fairly quick and easy to build. It takes up very little space on the wall. It's only a foot deep, uh, four feet tall, and the space I got it in, it's about nine feet wide. Although you can see I've got a few 10 foot boards up there that go a little beyond that. So it's built just out of a construction grade two by four out of the big box store and two pieces of the half inch 10 foot electrical conduit which I take those and cut them down into 12 inch pieces. And that's what ends up creating the arms that all the lumber is rusting on up there. So for this project, we start by taking that two by four, cut those down to four feet in length. And now that I got those two pieces, I go over the table saw and rip them in half because I want the final to be roughly a two by two that's four feet long. Now that I have that lumber cut, it's a matter of laying out the marks for where I want to drill the holes. These are going to be the holes that the electrical conduit go into to create the arms for the lumber to rest on. I'm going to drill those holes with a Forster bit, a three quarter inch Forster bit. And I'm also going to drill them so that the conduit has a slight angle up when it's on the wall. The idea being here that once you start putting the lumber onto the conduit and the weight of it starts pulling down on those pieces of pipe, that they will not go beyond being perfectly parallel. I want them to have a slight upward angle so that way the lumber tends to rest back against the wall as opposed to having any sort of forward slant that would cause the lumber to slide forward and fall off the rack. I set up a board on my drill press table at an angle so that way as I run the board back and forth and drill each of the holes, they're all at a uniform angle. So now that we got those three quarter inch holes drilled, which I drill those as deep into the two by fours as I can without actually going all the way through. I want those half inch conduits to rest as far into that two by four as I can to give it as much strength to hold that lumber. And I also pre-drill some pilot holes that are where I'm going to use four inch screws to screw these two by fours to the wall. Now that I've got all my holes drilled, next step is to get the ladder out and get up there and actually just attach the lumber to the wall. I use a level to make sure that they're perfectly vertical and I just drive screws in to the boards. I put, what did I put? One, two, three, four, five. I put five screws into each board. Uh, this seems to provide plenty of strength to hold the weight of all that lumber. Uh, you know, with that being said, this thing could fall down tomorrow, but I have had the previous rack, which is of the same style up there for more than two years without any problems. So I don't expect this one to give me any problems either because I think I actually have a few more screws in this one than I had in the last one. The key here though is to make sure when you're drilling those boards onto the wall that you're actually sinking those screws into studs on the wall. Because if you're sitting with just putting it in the sheetrock, it ain't gonna last no time at all. Uh, it'll rip out that sheetrock pretty quick, which is what actually dictates where my rack supports are on the wall. Because as you see the spacing up there actually matches the actual two by fours that are on the wall because I have those screwed directly into the studs of the wall. Now it's up there. I slide in the conduit pieces into the holes that I drilled. I'm just doing a friction fit. I'm not doing anything else because with that slightly up angle, they sit and lock into place fairly well with the weight of the lumber on them. In previous projects though, I have used self-tapping sheet metal screws to screw through the side of the two by four and into the conduit if you really want to lock it into place. But like I said, that's just a nice two. I don't think it's necessary and I didn't do it on this particular rack. That's it. Next is loaded up with lumber. So the only reason I took my old one down and built this new one is because I actually wanted to squeeze a little bit more use out of that space. My previous one, I had the spacing between each of the rows was about 14 inches. And what I learned is that left me about four inches or so of dead space. On this one, I figured I could do tenon spacing because of all the pieces of rough cut lumber I had, the widest one was nine inches. So giving myself 10 inches allowed for it all to fit up there, but also to maximize the space without there being any dead space. So there you have it. That is a nice, simple rack to create. Uh, like I said, very efficient. Love the way that the lumber looks up there on the wall. Um, as I said though, it's woodworking is not really all about having 
lumber up on the wall as much as it is about building projects. So hopefully I end up spending more time out here in the shop and use all that lumber and cycle through it so that I'm building a lot of things because I can say the, a lot of that cherry that's up there I've had for over 10 years because I bought it quite a long time ago and then kind of took a hiatus and didn't do a lot of projects. But that's changed in uh, 2020 and I hope to keep that trend up of creating a lot more projects, which means creating a lot more videos. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any of those videos, hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon next to it so you'll be notified of my new videos. And if you think I earned it, love you for you to hit that like button. And I really appreciate feedback. So if you got a question or some sort of other comment about the video or the project, some other ideas on what I could do differently, love to hear from you. So leave a comment down below and that will wrap up this video and I will see you in the next one. And if you can't wait, click one of these icons right over here to jump to the next video. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a little gas I had to let out. Okay.